So I came out here today to start a walk with you at my Rosa Sharon. Today we're going to walk around and we're going to look at and learn about some of the flowers that I grow here in my gardens that I also bring into my kitchen and use in my food because you may not be aware but many of the flowers that we grow out in our garden and enjoy are actually good for us and edible. So this is a good example of one of those flowers. Not only is the flower edible, but the bud, the leaves, and even the bark of this plant, the Rosa Sharon, is all edible. It's in the hibiscus family, and you can enjoy it in, as a garnish. You can put it in your salads. You could stir fry it or Cut some branches of it, put it in a vase, and enjoy it in your house. All of these are great ways that you can enjoy the flowers that grow in your garden. So let's walk around a little bit and discover some of the other flowers that you may not be aware of that you can eat and enjoy. So here we are with the purple one. The purple ones are the ones that have much more anthrocyanins in them than the white ones. The, the anthocyanins come from the purple color or the dark colors in the flowers, as well as if you're eating a vegetable that has those dark blue or purpley colors, they have a lot of anthocyanins. The, as you, it looks like a hibiscus and is actually in the hibiscus family. It has a nutty, almost a little bit sweet flavor to it and are beautiful and is a garnish and also delicious. I do want to remind everybody though that if you're going to pick flowers and eat them, make sure that they're organically grown. Preferably you want to grow them from seed and you want to make sure that you don't use any herbicides, pesticides or chemicals on them as the plants will absorb any chemicals and you don't want to eat a flower that's edible but may end up being toxic or do more harm than good for your body. The first flower I want to talk about here is a marigold. The marigold has a bright orange color to it. That color is caused by two different substances, carotenoids and carotene. Both of these are the same substances that give the carrots or the carrots their orange color. Carotenoids and carotene are rich in vitamin A, which is good for your eyes. Vitamin A is a substance that is good for your eyes as well as your immune system. It's also an anti-inflammatory and an important part of brain as well as body development in our children. So when you want to, if you want to enjoy a marigold, the best part of it to eat is the leaves. This, the bottom part, which is the stem part, tends to be a little more bitter. I cut that off usually and just eat the leaves. We'll sprinkle them here. And if you open this up, you'll see this is where the seed part is. If you've ever planted marigold seeds, you'll see that this is very similar to what they look like when you plant them. I've got some carnations here, but before I talked about them, I wanted to remind everybody that Farmer Fred told me I had said leaves in reference to the edible part of the marigold and not the flower or the petals of the flower. What I meant was the petals of the flower are the edible part that I enjoy and put in my salads. My carnations are done blooming. They bloomed last spring and they're all done. But I do love the fern and the foliage of them as well. So I thought I would talk about them anyway because they're a sweet flower and a delicious flower, as well as being a lovely flower that you can use in salads or even as decorations on cupcakes or something like that. They make a great garnish for a number of different dishes. In addition to that, carnations have some great medicinal properties. They're a good anti-inflammatory. People use them for menstrual, uh, herb, as a herbal remedy, for menstrual cramps, for muscle soreness, for muscle cramps. 
In addition to that, they also are good for our brain and our body because they have a number of antioxidants in them that help keep the cells of both our brain as well as our body healthy. So enjoy some carnations next time you have a chance. I decided this movie would not be complete without giving a shout out to Farmer Fred and his awesome, amazing chainsaw skills. When we have a tree that needs to be cut down and it's in a place where it would make a great bench, he will cut it down and then use his chainsaw to create a bench for a little shady area or a little garden space like he does here. I'm gonna actually stand up so you can see the bench. You can see it was a double tree. I don't do anything to the bench. I enjoy it. I like to sit and relax on it. And eventually it does weather, it does break down. Occasionally woodpeckers will come and peck it apart, but it lasts for several years. And it's the, and on our property, we don't have a shortage of trees for this type of a bench in our flower gardens. Hostas are one of my favorite plants. I love them because they're big and they have these big leaves and they grow in the shade and they really fill in my flower gardens. But they also have a lovely flower. In the springtime, I like to eat the shoots as they first come up. I cut them when they're tiny and saute them with a little garlic, onions, and maybe add a little Parmesan cheese. This time of year, I take the blossoms and chop them up. I'll put them in a salad, use them as a garnish for soup, and I enjoy them because I also know that they have some great medicinal properties. They're a good anti-inflammatory, they're a good pain reliever, as well as a fever reducer. In fact, in Asia, hostas are used in prescription medications. In addition to that, they also have some antioxidant properties that keep our brain as well as our body healthy. Enjoy hostas next time you get a chance. But wait, there's one more thing about hostas. Hostas have over 100 medicinal compounds that have been isolated from them. They have steroids, they have flavonoids, and they have alkalides in, a different, in addition to 97 other type of compounds. In addition to, I have a kitty cat coming to see me. Hello, kitty cat. Would you like a hosta flower? No? Okay, we won't make you eat a hosta flower. Okay, I have a little pot here of chives that I grow, and it just keeps coming back every year. Pretty much most of the part above ground of this plant is edible. The stems, it's in the garlic and onion family, so the stems, as well as the flowers, have kind of a cross in taste between garlic and onion. Both are delicious. I use them in my potato salad or anything where I would normally use scallions or some sort of garlic or some sort of onion garnish. The chives themselves have a lot of fiber, so they're good for digestion. In addition to that, they have vitamin A, which is good for your eyes and good for your vision. They also have flavonoids, which are good anti-cancer as well as anti-heart disease and will help lower your blood pressure. So chives are a great plant to add to your diet to help your body and brain stay healthy. I came over here by the mint. The mint, this mint is probably close to three foot tall. It just keeps coming back year after year. A lot of times I have to pull a lot of it out as it will take over a flower bed. So if you're growing mint, you probably want to put it in some sort of pot, but I just let it grow wild and when I get too much of it, I just take out any of the extra mint. The mint leaves are delicious. They have that nice pepperminty odor. They make a good tea. The tea is good for relaxing. Mint is also good for memory. In one study that was done, they gave a group of young adults mint to smell for five minutes before a test and their scores improved as a result of them being give, given mint to smell before the test. In addition to that, drivers who smelled mint while driving noticed an increased level in alertness as well as a decrease in anxiety and in frustration while they were driving. So if you want something to help you relax at the end of the day, brew a nice cup of tea, inhale the aroma, and enjoy the flavor of the mint tea before you go to bed. So these next two plants I think of as the winter cough cold 
upper respiratory flu plants. This one is a mini chrysanthemum. Daisies are also in this family, so if you have daisies, chrysanthemums, or these mini chrysanthemums, all of them are good for upper respiratory type illnesses, coughs, congestion. In addition to that, herbal medicine people use it as a preparation in treating different kidney as well as urinary tract ailments. This is the other upper respiratory plant, Echinacea purpura, also known as the cone flower. This flower is, has so many medicinal properties for upper respiratory type illnesses, cough, congestion, bronchitis, etc., sore throats, that in Asia it's actually used as a medicinal preparation and can be obtained via a prescription. The other uses of it are similar to the chrysanthemum in that it's also used for kidney ailments as well as urinary tract type infections. In addition to the flower and the petals of the echinacea plant, the roots are also used in preparations for colds and congestion during the winter season. I have here a couple of daylilies. This is the flower of the daylily as well as the bud of the daylily. Both of these are delicious and edible. Daylily has a couple of substances called carotene and carotenoids. These are the same substance that is in carrots and give it its bright orange or dark yellow color. The carotenoids are a precursor to vitamin A. Vitamin A is important for our eyesight and our vision. In addition to that, daylilies have more vitamin C than either asparagus or green beans and more protein as well. It, they also have more vitamin A than asparagus has in it. They taste, when you eat them, they have kind of a taste of a cross between an asparagus and a green bean. If you have organic daylilies growing in your garden, try them, pick them, and enjoy them in a stir fry, a soup, or even a salad. This is an edible flower that is probably familiar to most of you, the sunflower. We use it a lot in sunflower oil that we can purchase and sunflowers and sunflower oil, as well as sunflower seeds, are all good for the heart. They're heart healthy. It's a heart healthy oil. It helps lower your cholesterol, as well as your blood pressure. The whole flower is actually edible. You can eat the petals, as well as the center here, and the seeds once, they, once the petals die off. If the center parts are pollinated, it will be loaded with seeds. Our birds tend to like to come and enjoy the seeds. They're also a delicious way to get some protein and a healthy fat into your diet. In addition to that, in the winter time, I like to take the sunflower seeds and grow what I call sunflower shoots or sprouts. It's a microgreen, it's crunchy, it's delicious, and I put it in my salad in the winter time when I'm not growing sunflowers that I can add to my food and my dishes. Another flower that most of you are probably familiar with is dahlias. However, most of you probably don't realize that dahlias are edible. Not only is the flower petals, petals edible, however, they're not usually eaten. The flower petals are most often used. They're crushed and used as a poultice. It makes a good natural remedy as an anti-itch remedy for insect bites, insect stings, and things like that. The part of the dahlia that is eaten and has been eaten for centuries, especially in South America by the ancient Incas and Aztecs, is the dahlia tuber. It looks a lot like a potato, a fingerling potato. It has a carbohydrate in it called inulin. Inulin is a non-digestible carbohydrate, so if you decide to eat a tuber, Go easy in the beginning because that non-digestible carbohydrate may give you excess gas or even a stomach ache. A good way to enjoy a tuber is to grate it. You can put it in a bread. Like I use it, you can substitute it where you would use zucchini. You can substitute it in a zucchini bread or in a cake that you have zucchini in it. You can also chop it up and just lightly steam it and eat it that way as a vegetable. I do want to mention though that if you eat dahlia tubers, 
They're best if you grow them from seed rather than get a tuber commercially because the tubers you get commercially may very well have had pesticides or herbicides used on the dahlia or around the dahlia and they may have absorbed some of those toxins. So you can buy dahlia seeds, you can grow them from seed and make sure that you don't use anything on them that is toxic and then you can enjoy them as part of your daily diet. Ah, oh, that was a great walk. I'm ready to sit down for a bit and take a rest. I hope you enjoyed learning about all the plants that are in our gardens, in your garden, my garden, and how you can use them not only as a beautiful decoration on your table or in your house, but also as a nutritional and even medicinal use in your kitchen and in your food. If you found this information valuable, thank you for clicking the like button and subscribing. All of this helps my channel analytics and also helps me understand what content you find valuable so that I can continue to create content that is relevant and valuable to you. Also, don't forget to sign up for notifications so that you don't miss any of my gardening tips, cooking tips, my recipes, as well as my neuroscience-based parenting information. For more information about the neuroscience of food, of nutrition, of gardening, and growing both your fruits as well as your vegetables, and eating and enjoying them, go to my website at growwithdrjonette.com.